Welcome everyone to another session of Webinar Wednesday with the amazing Rick Altman. Today's session, Marvelous Makeovers Presentations Edition, is going to be a fan favorite. I can already see it. My name is Sharon Fitzpatrick and I'm your co-host for these events. Joining me as co-host is Dave Zielinski. Before we start, let me tell you a little bit about some of the housekeeping things we have. We've got a question pod where you can talk to us, interact with us, you'll find it on your dashboard. And there are a couple of us who are helping to answer questions and we'll make sure to get that to Rick as well. We also have resources on our website. We have a webinar page. We've got Google Plus, Facebook. It's a great opportunity for you to talk to each other. And last but not least, please tweet presentation expert during this webinar so you're able to then share your thoughts with your audiences as well as our own. It is my pleasure to introduce Dave Zielinski, the editor of Presentation Expert. He has got a wealth of knowledge and experience in the presentation space. He's an award-winning journalist and has authored a book called The Master Presenter that you can find information about either on our website or on Amazon.com. Dave, let me turn it to you. Thank you, Sharon, and happy birthday. Hope you enjoy your big day. Thank you. I'm pleased to welcome back Rick Altman as our presenter today and excited to watch him work his makeover magic. Rick is one of the most prominent commentators in the presentation community and well known as the host of the acclaimed Presentation Summit, set this year for September 27th through the 30th in New Orleans. Rick has been hired by multitudes of companies and read by millions of people, all of whom seek better results with message crafting, presentation design, slide creation, or delivery. Rick's common sense approach, pragmatic advice, and his wit set him apart in the professional community. But makeover sessions must rank somewhere near the top. Can you give us some insight into that and what goes into a makeover's appeal beyond just creating gorgeous slides? I can. Thanks, Dave. And uh, thanks, Sharon. And yes, happy birthday, Sharon. You know what? Um, I'm having deja vu because I think that we hosted a webinar exactly a year ago on your birthday last summer. And so well, I think we have to I think we have to make was, this an annual tradition now. Uh, it was the day before my birthday last year because my birthday is actually today. Last year we did it on the 14th, but I guess you're the best birthday present I can have. So every July, it's got to be you and me, kid. You got it. <laughs> All right, Dave, you're right. Uh, at the conference, the the uh, makeover sessions are are by far the most popular. Uh, of all the ones that we do. Um, and you know, I don't think that it's just in presentation. I think people really just love the whole before and after dynamic. You know, I mean, if you if you look at all the shows on television today, uh, where, you know, people buy a tear down house and they fix it up, or the group of misfits who win a football championship, or, you know, how about the biggest loser? I mean, isn't that like one gigantic makeover? So I don't think this is something unique to our industry. But the other component that makes our, our makeover session so compelling, in my opinion, is that we get our content from the people who attend. And there is just nothing more vital than watching work that is relevant to the audience. Uh, and I don't think it has to be relevant just to you to be impactful. I mean, after all, there's you know usually about 100 people in the audience at the conference. And um, we're, we're what? We're going to be about seven or 800 people on this, on this call. I think it's enough that you know that we're not just taking some generic slide that we found on the virtual side of the road, <laughs> that this is someone's livelihood and that they have placed their trust in us that we're going to do something that might in you know, some small way improve their lot in life. So I, you know, I, th I think that there's really something to that. Now at the same time that I inflate the importance of this whole experience, I also want to downplay it a little bit because I'm not expecting you all to react with shock and awe. In fact, I don't want you to do that. I, I, it is truly not my objective to leave you with your jaw on the floor going, wow, and thinking that you couldn't possibly produce. 
I, I don't want you thinking that you couldn't possibly produce the stuff I'm going to show you. In fact, just the opposite. I want you thinking, hey, I can do that. Yeah, sure, I see how he did that. I see why he did that. I could have done that myself. <laughs> What's the big deal? <laughs> In fact, and if your audience cannot relate to a makeover, then I really believe that you have produced something less than a success. So, so relating to the work, I think, is the biggest deal of all. So let's let's dive right in. And I want to start by by thanking my uh, my all girl band, uh, the, the the four makeovers that were the, the four slide decks that were sent in to me uh, from Linda, Joe, Heather, and Angela. The four of you are going to be the the stars of the show here. We're going to start with Linda Pepper, who. Um, uh, sent me a slide deck that was created um, either about or for human resources. And Linda, if you're on the call, I want you to be active with the chat panel uh, for you know to to interject along the way uh, for any of the stuff that uh, that we're going to discuss here. And um, so here is what. Uh, these slides look like from Linda. You can see September 2014. Uh, and the first thing I noticed right away was that there was a transition for the title slide. And I thought, okay, well, that's interesting. Who's going to see a transition for the title slide? I mean, that should be up before anybody comes into the room, right? And then I went to the next slide and I saw the same thing. And so uh, it hit me, okay, so that, that random bars transition was going to be used for every slide in the deck. Okay, so now I get it. And I also note that the content appeared just about one second later. So if I can, let me just do that again. So as we come from this slide to this slide, there's the random bars transition. And then a moment later, the, the content comes in. I wonder if maybe that isn't waiting a little bit too long for things. Um, we'll, we'll see as we get going. But you can see it again there. So the random bar, and then, and then the... the um, uh, the content comes in, and we we now see the visual motif for this. We have a background color. Uh, Sharon, what would you call that color? Is that some sort of a mustard, or I don't know what to call that. I call it kind of lime green, maybe. Lime or... green. Okay. So there's the lime green background. There's a white overlay that has a shadow, and then there's the gradient that is the actual background for the content. And you know, I I I think I'd be fine with the lime green. I'd be fine with the white. But I've got a I've got an issue with that with the gray gradient, uh, especially when you when you put it in there with the red titles. Also, I just think that that that. Re that produces a drop in readability as we also get a drop in contrast. So the first thing I'm wondering about is to scrutinize that gray backdrop to the text. All right, now the um, that animated GIF is a bit painful. Uh, I think that it is a budget getting cut, but it's so low resolution that I can barely tell. I see scissors cutting something, and. Um, uh, and, and the the bullets, the actual bullet character itself. You know, I don't mind having bullet characters that 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 have have low contrast, but but those I think really create sort of a bad vibe with that gray. They they just they don't vibrate well at all with me. And I think we need a hyphen right here. Um, I'm using my cursor. Can you see my cursor, Sharon? Can I use that to point to things? Can anybody see my cursor? <laughs> I'm going to assume that you can, because uh, I'm going to point to things uh, throughout the way. All right. Now, this is an awfully long headline for a slide that already has so many bullet points. And um, I, I'm left wondering, who is going to read that headline? Is the presenter going to read the headline, or is um, uh, are, are the audience members expected to read it? All right, and we're going to come back to this slide in a few minutes, and we're going to we're going to actually uh, make this the um, uh, in our spotlight for a little while. All right, now I clicked on this headline when I first saw this deck, thinking that it would go somewhere, because you know when you when you underline today, uh, I mean, isn't that what um, what uh, underlining means? A hyperlink, right? I think in this case the underlining was just uh, for further emphasis. 
because um, you know bold is already used here, and I don't know if you want to use bold italic. Um, so I, I have the feeling that Linda ran out of emphasis, so she you know resorted to the old typewriter uh, methodology of underlining. I would generally resist that, just because today that's not what underlining means. Today it means a hyperlink. All right, and um, now we really get to the heart of the presentation, the goals for 2015. And um, as I walk through these next few slides, you'll see each of them are about goals. And um, I'm not sure what I think of this level of detail on the slide. Um, now, I... I'm, I'm just wondering if, if this is the right place for this. If, because um, you know, all of that detail on the slide means that all we can do is see this first goal: continue to work toward a turnover rate of 15% or less. We're going to go to the next goal. That's going to have to be on the next slide. Now, um, I, I'm not sure what I think of the detail, but I know what I think of the detail not lining up. I don't like that. The A, B, C, D, they should all be on that first line. All of the text should be on the second line. Uh, to not have them line up, I don't know, that, um, I, I, just, I, I think that just looks too careless. So again, we can debate whether this amount of detail should be on each slide or if Linda should just say it or if it should be available for a handout, but if you're going to put that detail there, you've got to make it look better than that. Okay, so then here's the next one, and here's the next two goals. And our next one, now I note that this time, um, you know, so now these are some little gripes. I mean, there's a bullet in front of this goal, and there wasn't a bullet in front of the other goals. And I also note that there are some case inconsistencies here, the T in training, the M for managers, these, these weren't uh, uh, upper, and these, these weren't all uppercase before. Um, now they are, and um, uh, financial wellness. If that's if there's a class name, financial wellness, that's fine. If there's a class called business grammar, otherwise, I would really argue for all of this to just be sentence case. But above all, it's got to be consistent, and I would want all of these double spaces out of here. Okay, now you can call me anal at this point. You know that there's two spaces right here. I think there might be two spaces there also. Um, but I'm going to tell you that that those are the little things that that I think matter. I mean, I think that being that in corporate America, you want clean, consistent slides, and you want to clean up little things like that. Same thing with the hanging indents here. I'm not really sure why we have our hanging indent. We didn't before, and so we shouldn't have it here either. And then here's the final goal. All right, so here are the slides that you just saw. And if you take them in as a whole, like here, and this is one of the things I always do on makeovers, I always want to in some way look at all the slides at once because that will really give you an idea of, of what the overall presentation is going to look like. And I note that, that in some cases we have titles that are centered, we have titles that are left aligned. This one's perilously close to the edge here, and this one actually does knock into the edge on the other side. So these are the kinds of things we're going to want to clean up. These are red, these are blue. You know, there might be a reason for that. This one's blue, this one is is not. Perhaps there's a reason for that, but I'm going to want to have a I'm going to, I'm going to want to hear a really good reason <laughs> why some of these titles are blue, some of them are red, some of them are underlined, some of them aren't. And um uh, cuz I'm I'm going to I'm going to really want to scrutinize that. All right, we're going to start with one slide here. And let's bring this slide up and let's just see what we can do with this one slide. I, I want to show you what, what this looks like if we remove that background gray. I mean, I think already it looks a little better. At least it's more readable. And now it's cleaner still. So all I've done is I've removed that background. Okay. All right, let's keep going though, because pl there's plenty more we can do uh, to to this to this slide, starting with um, just cleaning that up a little bit. And, and I'm sorry, it's time for that little graphic to go. I think we can do better than a tiny little piece of clip art. And I also wonder about about the uh, the title. It was pretty pretty long there, and um, I, I think we can 
do better here. So I'm just going to continue to simplify and try to clean up a little bit. And as we do, you know, now this slide starts to vibrate a little bit better. And uh, now do they, is it important that there are four classes being offered? If not, I'd lose the numbering. And we can probably do better margins still. Okay, in fact, yeah, so from here, um, is it important that it's in August and September? Maybe, maybe Linda should simply say that. August and September, here are the four classes that we're offering. And um, do we, you know, does the title need to say that it, we're going to coordinate targeted training through webinars, seminars, and CSC? I believe CSC is just a company that offers training. You know, can't we maybe just say, here are our webinars and seminars? Anything else, any of the stuff that I've eliminated, if Linda thinks it's important, Linda should say it. Or, uh, and I'm presuming here that Linda is the person uh, giving the presentation, maybe not. But, um, but Linda's team, you know, whoever the presenter is, they can say all the things that I have eliminated from this slide. But at this point now, I think we have a slide that works. And more importantly, if we wanted to go further, now we could really imagine bringing in a visual that might be relevant and evocative. And that was really easy to find. In fact, so that this training is conducted by CSC. There is a CSC training in action. And the, uh, the, the text now easily fits and is integrated into this slide with a very simple technique. Those of you that have been in my seminars and webinars, you've seen this technique. I'm like a one-trick pony with this semi-transparent rectangle that goes from almost completely black on this side. Uh, sorry, it's all black, but it's almost it's com it's completely opaque on this side, and it becomes 100% transparent somewhere right around here. And so what that does is that blends the text with the imagery, and it also provides contrast for for readability. And when you take simple text messages and you blend them with relevant photos, you create a slide that is going to be completely different than well than most slides out there. I mean, you know, you tell me. So so here's the continuum. You know, here was when I got rid of just the background and I think just doing that helped the slide. When we honed and distilled to a, to a point right there, uh, I think that, that that slide works. Taking it all the way to here, now you really have a dramatic difference. And so this starts with, um, with just eliminating some of the flotsam and some of the ex extraneous text on the, on the slide. Then uh, let, let's move on to those five slides that made up the goals. Because as I, as I mentioned, I really think that, that one of the values here is to show all the goals together at once. And that won't happen across five slides unless you then go back and do it. And so I'm going to once again scrutinize the level of detail on these slides. So here's what one of them looked like. And um, you know, so what, what can we do? Uh, in, instead of this, well, I'm, I, I went out to the, um, to, to, to the company's website and I found this really nice blue and a really nice logo also. And so I'm going to just run this strip along the bottom with the logo and I'm going to define a point straight up from the left edge of that logo. And that's where the title is going to be. And I'm going to decree that there will be no content that will ever appear, excuse me, no text that will ever appear to the left of this line right here. You know, maybe I'll bring a photo all the way across to the left edge. That's okay. But, um, but there's a line right here where all of this will appear. And um, so, you know, maybe by bringing in these six, what I'm telling my audience is that there, there are, there, we have six goals for 2015. And I'm going to share them with you now. And uh, I'll provide all of the detail, or I'll let my audience know that it's available as a download. And, um, and I'll spend however much time I need with, with each of these. I have no idea what disabled utilization means. But I have every confidence <laughs> that Linda could explain that. You know, so these are just really basic. All of the flesh should be provided by Linda in the moment, in the room, with her audience. Okay. Now, if she thought that it really was important that some of that detail be here, we could design this slide in such a way that now you know, the right area 
you know, so she could bring in the detail for each one, one by one, uh, in this space over here. Again, I'm not really certain that, that, that that's important, but, um, but if so, it could still be done. But I think what's really important is that you see all six of these goals together at once. All right, so there were those six goals. Instead, all on one like that. So, Rick, let me interrupt you because we do Please. have a couple of questions. So, um, one of the, we have a question from Jeff. He said, "You um, the long the slide with the long headline. How do you contrast this issue with some experts' advice? Make the head, headers pay for their rent and use sentence titles." It's a contrast issue. How do you, a lot of experts are suggesting that you make the headers pay for their rent. You know, the pay for their rent. Pay. You, you make the headlines pay for their rent. Is that what you said? I like that metaphor. What do you mean yeah. by that? Uh, I think basically that they need to be probably bigger in size and you need to really stand out. Okay, I'll, I'll agree with that second part. They need to stand out. Now let's take a look at this, that this title that's here right now, Goals for 2015. Okay, that is maybe 28 point. It may be 24 point. It's really quite small, much smaller than the, than the titles that were used in the other slides. But I would argue that it stands out plenty. And part of what creates prominence is not the size of a title, but the space in which it swims. All of the white space around that title is going to bring plenty of prominence to it. I also would, would challenge the notion that a title is going to be thought of as more prominent because it's more verbose. Uh, I, I, I would reject that notion. I think that having a wordy title is going to make it more of a burden. And if anything, it's going to be, it's going to invite people to try to ignore it <laughs> rather than read it. So yes, I agree with the general notion that titles should stand out, but uh, but I'm going to I'm going to challenge uh, the assertion that they stand out, that they, that they can be made to stand out because they use big type or because there's a lot of words. Well, I think also too, you know, you have to look at what keywords are important. So. Targeted training, is that an important concept? You have to so you've got to weigh what it is, the messages that you're trying to get out there, as well as how long you want to make it. I would agree so with that. Yep, I got no problem with that. So we have a couple of questions about the picture. So um, they want you to be able to show how to create the semi-transparent slide with the photo. Mm -hmm. and, and that's one of the questions, as well as inserting the picture into the background. And, okay. and then the, the final part of that, because I think you can answer it all at once, is if you're going to use that photo background blending idea, do you need to use it on all the slides? Or what are some thoughts on using you know, slides throughout and how do you balance it with a more traditional background? Good questions. Okay, so here's that slide with the photo and with the text. So to create that transparency, I'm just going to create a rectangle. And I'm going to put it, cover it in this space somewhere right around here. And I am going to remove the outline, and I'm going to give that a particular fill pattern. It's going to be a gradient fill, which goes from left to right. And I don't need any of these intermediate stops. You're looking at version 2013 of the software. This could be done with anything back to, I think, version 2003. All right, I want the left side to be black. I want the right side to be black. The difference is that on the right side, I'm going to dial up this transparency all the way to 100%. Now I simply need to, to order this. I need to move it backwards so it is in front of the text and behind, I'm sorry, it's behind the text, but it's in front of the photo. And you can see what that does. That just provides enough contrast uh, and in a very gradual sort of way, so it, it just looks blended and integrated. Now, should you do this on every single slide? No, you should not. Uh, if you try to, to find relevant imagery for every single slide, in most cases, you're probably going to be forcing it and you're going to then uh, be using gratuitous 
and irrelevant photos that are going to be just as bad as crappy clip art. You know, soon you're going to find you're going to have to resort to the handshake or the guy crossing the finish line holding a briefcase or you know whatever those ridiculous photos are that we see uh, it's, it's, it's in, in stock houses. So um, so no, you should not think you should not expect that you have to have a photo like this for every single slide. In fact, I think it's nice to have a visual break. In fact, if you decided that this was not appropriate. And uh, oh, now let's see. I uh, will need to do a little bit of. Um... Okay, so I think that that this photo, this slide right now, I mean, with a little bit of branding somewhere on the slide, would be perfectly fine. Okay, uh, and and the, and that all that that nice white space will will be will be a nice breather. You know, maybe if you're going to do this, then you then you could open it up like this, uh, or find some nice place to break. Whatever. Okay, so 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 no, you don't need to do it on every single slide. Other questions, yeah, Sharon? I agree. I think we'll, I think we're all in agreement that maybe this is next year's topic: how to deal with with uh, pictures in your presentation. It seems to be a really important one. So mm -hmm. back to Rick. Okay, so if there aren't any others, let's head back and uh, let's introduce Joe Clem and her presentation from Apache, which um, used animation. Uh, and in many cases, I thought her, in her, her instincts were very good, uh, and they needed a little bit of honing in other places. All right, so here is the, uh, the title slide to this, and I think it's a cool title slide, and I really think these lines are really cool also. I just wish that the text followed those cool lines. Um, you know, the E actually of, of, of Alec McKenzie breaks over out of this, this, uh, this, this brown backdrop here. Uh, I, I wish the text could follow these lines a little bit. Um, and I also... I think that we're um, that we've sort of made a, a mess of Joe's name. Unless Joe married Mark Facilitator, <laughs> I, I I don't think her name is Joe Clem hyphen Facilitator. <laughs> I think we got to fix that as well. All right, now this next slide. There's a whole lot of clicking here. Each one of these flies in on a click. I don't really think text should fly at all. I think that maybe these should be fades or wipes. But should they go? Should each one be on its own click? I really don't think so. Uh, I, I'd have to. I'd challenge Joe to tell me why she'd want to bring each one of those in on a click like that. Um, I also think there's too many of them. And I also note that there's a speaker over here. Now, if I were to play this, I think that you would all just get static. Take my word for it that, that what this, when you click here, you get some nice music. And I'm not at all clear why there's music to be played on this slide or when the music should be played on this slide. If the music is sort of the backdrop for these points coming in, then I think that the, then it, it should start at the beginning of the slide. If, um, if, if the music is playing over uh, Joe's spoken narrative, I think that could be a bit distracting. So um, I, I, I'd want to challenge why there's music on this slide at all. It, it just gives me the impression that this slide is trying to be a little bit too orchestrated with every one of these title, uh, every one of these uh, bullet lines coming in on a click and the music. It's almost like, well, you know, where, where's the presenter in all of this? Um, I will say, though, it, at least it has distracted us from what looks like hair on fire. <laughs> and maybe this is the fire in the belly. Maybe this corresponds to this first text, um, and I guess maybe that's what fire looks like when it's in a belly. I don't know. Um, but so there, there's a few things about this slide that are just a little bit unnecessary. Okay, have you heard yourself say? And now the next click brings us the first one, and then the second one, and then the rest. Now just about anybody can relate to these statements. Okay, the hard part is reading them. When they fly in like that, they're, they're distracting. And again, there's the, the, it raises the question, who is going to be saying these? Will Joe say them 
or is Joe expecting you to read them? This slide needs to give a better cue as to who is expected to read these things. Because again, just about anybody in corporate America can, can relate to these, to these statements. There's some impact to them. I th I'd like to see if we can give more impact, better impact. Okay, uh, so now um, these uh, clock heads are kind of cool, but uh, boy, the poor things are massively distorted. They're, they're, they're much, much taller than they should be. And, um, and now, interesting that these are the ones right here that you, could, that you could justify to be animated one by one, and instead, ironically enough, they all come in at once. And they came in with a different treatment. Um, I'm not really sure what that was. Maybe that's where they all fly in together. I don't know what that was. Um, but um, I, I think that, again, we're just giving a little bit too much importance to a bunch of text. Same thing here. Uh, so okay, so so now we have absolutely no animation whatsoever. Uh, whereas you know, um, and, and I don't think any of this needed animation. So I'm fine with none of this coming up uh, in, in its own sequencing. Um, I am wondering once again who is supposed to read this. These three questions right there will tell you if the issue can be properly addressed using training. If training is the answer, then you can start working on an assessment to figure out where you currently are and where you need to be. Whew. Okay, well, if Joe is going to say that to the audience, then there's going to be a real disconnect here because the audience is going to see it while Joe's saying it. They're going to read it faster than she can say it. They're going to be done before she's done. And uh, you know, this is you know, in many. This is how, what some people identify as classic death by PowerPoint when when uh, you know the presenter reads what's already on the slide. Um, so if, if instead Joe is going to be silent while this is being read, okay, I get that. Um, but then I, again, I think we can cue the audience a little bit more uh, about all of that. And I like this story a lot. Same question. Who is reading it? The audience or Joe? All right, then there was this, um, this really nice little video, uh, only you can take the next step. And uh, when Joe clicks on the photo, you can see the hyperlink right there. That takes you to a YouTube video. Uh, and so we have a, a, you know, so there's a fair amount of effort that needs to happen here. Because Joe needs to get to her mouse, she needs to click, then you hope that the browser window comes up properly and then this video is going to show. Now this is really a, a pretty funny video and I'm going to mute the sound and just show you a little bit of this where these two people are on an elevator where it suddenly stops. Bang! Right there, it stopped. And so he says, well, what's going on? And uh, she says, oh, well, let me, um, and now she says, let me find my phone. Oh, I don't have my phone. Now who doesn't have their phone these days? <laughs> That's the first part. But, but so they're thinking, well, what do we do? Let's call for help. Then they start shouting for help when, you know, the, this, the folly of this is so obvious, is so hysterical that they're like five steps from the top of the elevator. They could, the escalator, excuse me, they could walk off and instead they're, you know, shouting for help and all this stuff. So it's really quite funny, um, stuck on an escalator take action, uh, you know, it's all up to you, you know, you, and so all, so it, it's, a, it's a nice video, but Joe is at the mercy of a few things here. First of all, she has to click, then she has to hope that she has a solid internet connection, then she has to make sure that her browser window is going to come up in the right size, and it's going to play. You saw at one point there was an ad that showed on top of my YouTube video, so I'd like to think that we could clean this whole process up a little bit. All right, now here I truly have no idea what this slide is trying to say. We will all be, the, now maybe this is like say, trying to imply that, that, that we were interrupted in the middle of a thought. Decide today to make sure there were more days when you were making your life happen for you than letting life happen to you. I think I know, I, I think I understand what this is saying, but oh my goodness, this is just such a mouthful. So um, uh, this is just, it's contributing to the, to, to the impression that I have that these slides are trying to take over too much of what should be Joe's responsibility. Joe should be the storyteller here, not her slides. All right, and then finally, um, actually, well, there's just a few more. Um, this one, I, I, I'm, 
it's commitment, control, choice. Was it supposed to come up that way? Because these arrows imply that we're going to go this way, um, but maybe there was a reason why we go from here to here to here. All right, and then, okay, whoa. Okay, now I'm not sure if you heard that. I sure heard that in my headset. Oh boy, each one of those bullets came up with a little sound uh, associated with them. And uh, then this one flies in from there. And uh, oh my goodness. Okay, so a little too much flying. Same thing here. Whole lot of flying is going on. And um, uh, you know, it's quite possible that, that that Joe's narrative during all of this would would would, would carry the day a little bit. But um, I don't know. There's just a whole lot going on. And then more irony that here is a slide that really could benefit from some animation, from some sequencing, but this is all one image. It's a low res image too that's just been that's been imported into the slide. So um, you know unless in, in, unless uh, you're gonna take it apart and recreate it, this image is gonna is gonna land here on the slide. I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to the slide because this one really does would really benefit from from some sequencing. All right, so we need more cohesion across these slides. We need the slides to take a back seat to Joe. Joe should be the star of this show, not her slides. And uh, so let's go back to that title slide. Um, now, and I think what the, this is a reference to a book. Um, and, and Joe can correct me if I'm wrong here. I hope Joe's on the call, uh, and if so, she can she can uh, jump in in the chat and uh, and and tell Sharon that that this is a reference to a, a, a literary work, I think, um, because 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 uh, here's the the presenter's name, and I think this is the author of this work. And uh, one way or the other, though, with a little bit of cleaning up, see now we've got some, now these follow these follow this line here. And um, just you know, a little bit of thought given to that uh, will re really helps out there because I, I like the rest of this. All right, then when we get into the interior, let's just take. There's that same brown that we saw on the title slide. There's the logo, and if we drop that down here, just like I did for Linda's earlier, just a very simple treatment of a bar with the logo, and this is really all we need. The title is here content here once again we're going to define a space about about an inch in from the left and uh, and all the content will be to the left of that so if we were to apply oh and then then what one bar to simplify and again right here this is a light shade of that same brown this will then fade out and this this is marking the edge of all the text right there so if you recall, this is what that, that slide was at first. I also think there's just too many of these. So um, what if we pick the top four and we identified those top four as key attributes? Because I don't know, if you get 10 key attributes, that sort of waters down the whole notion of what a key attribute is. But um, so, it, so he, here's what it would look like on that on that uh, on, on the template that I created for this. And what if we pick just those four? Right there. I don't really know what is meant by responsible irreverence, but that's a really cool <laughs> phrase. So let's go with those four. And now, now we really have a defensible slide. Here are the key attributes for Apache leaders. These four. If Joe wants to bring in some others also, she can talk about them. But uh, pick four. You know, they fit on a slide nicely, and they also fit better within audience members' attention span. And it's just going to be, look so much cleaner. And you're not going to need any animation at all. For, for four bullets, you don't need sequencing. In fact, you shouldn't have them. I can discuss this further as to why I believe that's the case, that you should not. I don't think you should ever sequence standard bullet slides like this. I mean, if you had 20 points on the slide, OK, fine. But if you have 20 points on your slide, you've got far bigger problems <laughs> than whether you animate them or not. I would argue for si simple, simple slides like this, don't animate your text at all. Just put them up there and speak to them. Makes everybody's lives easier. Like I said, I'll elaborate later if, uh, if anyone wants. OK, so then there's this next one here. And have you ever heard some yourself say, you know, these are four good points. So, you know, let's, let's just 
it didn't take long at all to find a, a photo that might be relevant. You know, ultimately Joe would decide that. You know, wh whether this is a relevant photo that adds to it or not. If so, great. And if not, yank it um, and just just leave those four points up there um, with one big quote mark for them. And uh, and there you go. And they, and again, either bring them all up at once and speak to them, or bring them up literally letter by letter, which I'm going to show you in a second. If you want your audience to read it, if you want your audience members to read it themselves, that's the cue you'd give to them. All right, goals for the day with uh, the clock heads. I think we can do better. I got rid of one of them that, was, that seemed superfluous. Three goals, there you go. All right, and then is training the right solution with this? We, we just got to lose that whole paragraph. Uh, if, if it's important, Joe says it. And if, and if the audience needs to read it, put it on the handout. That's just too much for the slide. And as soon as you get down to those three questions, then, you know, it's just a piece of cake to create a slide around that. Do you need training? Here are the three questions that you should ask. And notice that each of the questions ends with do your job or do the job. So let's instead put that up on the title. There. Do you need training to do your job? Here are the questions you have to ask. Do you have the skills? Do you have the desire? Is the infrastructure allowing you to do it? You know, and, and I'm sure Joe would be perfectly capable of, of, of elaborating on those points. All right, and then there's this great story. Uh, which which deserves a better treatment, and maybe some of you have heard this before, um, but I'd like to see Joe tell this story differently. You know, this this reminds me of the uh, of the lumberjack, she could say, and um, uh, the lumberjack who was visited by somebody, farmer saw the lumberjack working. You can see, notice how that's coming up letter by letter. That's my invitation to you to read it. And so I'm going to shut up and I'm going to, I'm going to bring up each of these points and I'm going to shut up. So the farmer, answer, and, and so the lumberjack answered. Well then, the farmer said, why don't you sharpen your saw blade? Okay, so I'm giving. So I, I want you to read these, and so letter by letter is what cues you. But whether you read or whether I read it, you know, by by cleaning up this slide, and and I think that, that that's a photo that really does work, because you can really see just how how often this lumberjack would have to sharpen those. I mean, he probably has to replace those teeth often. You know, when you're cutting up a big piece of wood like that. So the whole the whole notion of oh, I'm you know I I, I I'm too busy to do the stuff I really should do. So in Instead, I'm going to work inefficiently. I mean, that's a great message, and I'm sure that with the right visual and with with Joe leading the way here, she could really drive that point home with a lot of impact. Okay, so you remember this one. So there are many tools available that let you rip videos from YouTube. Once you get the video on your hard drive, then you can insert it into the slide. Once you insert it into the slide, then you can place it in the animation stream so you don't need to click on anything. You just need to use your remote. So here's the way this slide can look. Only you can take the next step. Now I don't have to go to my mouse, to, uh, to, to my, uh, to my mouse and click on anything. I'm just going to advance. And once I advance, the video starts. So I could be out in front of the audience where I don't have to do anything and the, and the video is going to play. It's going to play not in a browser but inside my slide. So the key here really is any time that you can rip a video and get it on your hard drive as a video file instead of having to go out to the internet to get it, you're going to, um, you're going to create a, a smoother experience for your audience. Okay, and then there was this guy here. Now, I, I don't know who Tony Buzan is, but it was really easy for me to Google search him and, and see that he creates uh, charts and diagrams like this all the time. And so I found one that was a much higher resolution than this. Now, I didn't fancy actually recreating this uh, you know, in, in Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw or a program like that. So I sort of took the poor person's version of that, which looks like this. So here's how I would bring this up, and I would introduce that there are five branches to successful goal setting, and um, once again, I'm just going to use a semi-transparent shape. Each one of those five branches is being obscured by a shape that is about 10% transparent. So with each click, 
I'm going to make that shape go away. So let's first talk about people. People, yeah, who, when, where, target, whatever, all the things, all the brilliant things Joe wants to say about people. Then let's talk about the career path that these people would be on, yada, yada, yada. And then the importance of, uh, of health, and after health comes wealth. Then comes growth. Now, maybe growth actually should appear before. Maybe it's people, then growth, then career. Joe gets to decide how she tells this story. And, um, and you can see this is a, a better picture. And bringing you along gradually like this in these bite-sized pieces, made that makes Joe a better storyteller. That makes you a more receptive audience. That wasn't terribly difficult to do. Those are just a bunch of shapes that were sitting. I needed to do a little bit of uh, node editing to, uh, to put the shapes. They're not just rectangles. They're funky shapes. And I can show that to you if you'd like. And then um, they are set with 10% transparency. You can see that one there. It's about a 10% white rectangle. Or not rectangle, but a shape. And then when I click, uh, that triggers the animation, and it is a exit animation. You know, most of the time when you're animating, you're concerned with how it enters the slide. In this case, what we're talking about is how it exits the slide. And so when I click, it goes away. That introduces the final little branch here, and there you go. All right, so there were some of the original slides and the made-over ones with very simple branding and uh, just simplification in all cases. And once again, you know, a few of these have photos, some of them don't, and, um, and that's perfectly fine. I wonder about that question mark. If you think that question mark is gratuitous, then you'll lose it. You get rid of it, that slide would be fine without it. Same thing with the, with the woman whispering. I mean, really all of these. I like the lumberjack the best. I think the goals works too, but if you don't like it, then you just eliminate it, and, and the slide still works perfectly fine. We're blowing up the question pot here. So there are a couple of things. One is node editing and they want to learn more and how. Animation they want to learn more and how. And then also to the concept of the rip editing and where do you get the video. We need a video ripper recommendation. Okay. All right, so I will happily answer those questions. Uh, it means that we will almost certainly go beyond 12 o'clock. That's fine with me. Um, animation, that that's a whole rabbit hole. In fact, I think you and I have done an entire hour on animation before. Um, so I won't go too deeply into that, but um, let's... Um You're absolutely right, we did. And we also did one on surviving PowerPoint. So we've given people the, the link to that so they can go back and look at some of the picture transitions. We'll do the same okay. uh, as far as the, anim the animation as well. Keep going. You're, this is all great, great stuff. Okay, so, so here is what this looks like. Um, and if I were to edit the points, you'd see that this is, this is a, a funky shape so that it just fills this but then doesn't obscure any of that. Same thing here. See, that's a real weird shape. And so you, you, can, you can do this with just about any closed shape inside PowerPoint. So if I were to edit these points and I wanted to move them around, I could. You see the little Bezier things that pop out and stuff. So all I'm doing is just trying to cover this area, but I didn't want to cover that guy right there. Each of these shapes is set. Let's do a couple of things. So first of all, they are set white with a 10% transparency, so you can just barely see through them. See? And then they're just set with a simple uh, exit fade. That's all there is on a click, one second. It just goes away when I, when I say so. So really the only tricky thing here is, that is, the, is the node editing. And if we start from here and I right click and say edit the points, then I'm, I'm working as if I'm in a graphic drawing program where now I can, I can add a point right there, I can make that point come in like that, I can you know, just pretty much do anything I want to this shape and just screw it all up. And all I'm trying to do is just create a shape that covers just this area here, but not that. See, I'm just making it so that, it's, so that it covers the, the stuff I want. Not too, much, not too big of a deal there. Okay, um, ripping video. Um, the one that I recall, there's only one. Now, there are there's software that you can use, and there are services that you can go to. And the service that I rem whose URL I remember is called KeepVid. There's another one. There's several others also. And if you Google search 
download YouTube videos, you'll see these. So you just put the URL in here, click download, and it's going to then give you some options. And so ultimately what it did is it created a, uh, an MP4 file, um, and that file that I just simply bring in to my slide. Insert video, go get it, sit it here. Notice that now when you, when you create, when you bring in video, um, by default, it is set on a trigger so that you click the video to make it start. But that's only the default condition. Uh, if you want to instead make it so that it happens on a click, as I've done here, that's easy. In fact, let, let me just let me, let me do that real quickly. So insert video. Hopefully, it remembers where I last was. Yes, good. Stuck on an escalator. MP4. Bring it in. So it's really big. Size it up a little bit. Put it wherever you want to. You know, I put it right on that little left edge. See here, trigger. So what this is telling me now is that the way this is going to run by default is that this video is going to play when I click on it. See, watch my cursor. See, when I click on it. But I don't want that. I don't want to have to click on it. I may be standing out in front of my audience a long way away from my computer. So I'm going to just take this and I'm going to do that. I just moved it outside the trigger and then the trigger went away. So now it's just part of the animation stream. It's going to happen with whatever else I want to animate. So I have a rectangle that I want to have fade in first. You know, fade the rectangle in first, then play the video. I could also make it so that the video appears when I want to. So let's fade the video in also. So now our animation stream is going to bring a rectangle in. Who knows why I just decided to do that. Bring the video in, then play the video. Okay, so let's watch that. Okay, so here's, this, here's the way it is first. Here's my first click. Here's my second click. And now here's my third click. Okay, so that's not terribly difficult to do. It's just it's not the default. And I know with video, a lot of people don't go past the default. But you don't, videos don't have to be uh, animated so that you click on them. They can just be part of the animation stream. So you're just clicking on your remote or pressing the space bar or, or what have you. Okay, then let's visit with Heather, Heather Wilson, who gives us a really nice, uh, actually allows us to elaborate a little bit on this whole notion of the storyteller and the pace of the storyteller. And we do it through her frustration. Her, she is frustrated by this slide right here. And by looking at it, you could imagine why she might be frustrated. And uh, she and I had an email exchange about this where she said to me, I have a slide attached that my sales team loves to use. We call it the messy slide. And they like the fact that it's messy. They think it shows how, how busy we are for our customer. But I hate it. Rick, you're lucky. Heather is in the house. And she's the... Uh well on her way to making comments. Great. So, so Heather complains that, that, that anytime she tries to make a change, they all say, no, 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 no. It has to be the way it was before. And they have a very stringent brand, she says. Slide layout has to have the upper area and the lower area. So really only the middle area for content. We, and no 3D shapes. Everything flat. OK, well, I don't mind the prohibition on 3D shapes. And I do understand the general notion that a busy slide implies a busy company. But let's see if we can maybe work within those with those constraints. So here's the things that we that the, are the, the top and the bottom. And even though Heather said I can't make any changes, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to just make some very simple changes. I don't really understand what this little guy is here. I think that we could create nice separation and, and join these two a little bit better like that. And then down here at the bottom, all I want to do is bottom align the page number and the uh, and, and the disclaim and the uh, the copyright note, just like that. So that's all I want to do to the top and the bottom of the slide. Um, really, what we have to do is we have to talk about the middle of the slide, the area where we aren't allowed to make any changes at all. And just like we were talking about before with uh, with Joe's slide deck. The animation sequencing can make you a better storyteller. So if if um, uh, so in in this case, uh, if if this text comes up like this, then okay. Let's see. I, I'm sorry. I'm mix, mixing up my names. This is not Linda. Um, this is um, um, uh, Ms. Wilson. Well, I, I, Sharon. What's what's her first name? I'm sorry. I forgot. 
Yeah, I was trying to tell you it's Heather. Heather, yes, thank you, Heather. So, so, so Heather could speak to this slide like this. You know, first, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. And I think actually Heather described that that she's not the one that gives this presentation. She works on the content. So she would be collaborating with her presenters, uh, so that the presenters could um, thank everybody for coming. We've got three main categories of activity. You see them here, and maybe they'd speak about them a little bit. The next click, you know. So let's talk a little bit about the first one. And there's three three subdivisions that we, uh, you know, of our offerings, two of them for administrative technology. So you can see what I'm doing, very simple animation, just bringing my audience along gradually. And I would advise that they not go any further than here uh, until they're comfortable that everybody is with them about what they're looking at and what they're about to see. Then when they're about to see it, let's bring each column in one by one also. So for investment philosophy, yada, yada, blah, 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 because you know those, those five points there, I think those five points are digestible. I think that, that, that Heather's team could speak to those five points without getting all mucked up. And then once they've spoken to those five points, once they're ready, now let's speak about these points here about investment strategies. You know, that's a bit of a heavy lift there, but still, little by little, they're, they're not going to be visually overwhelmed. So now wealth programs, I mean, you can see what I'm doing. These blocks of copy are just coming in on a very simple wipe from the top. And, you know, I think that maybe there's a chance that, um, that the audience is going to digest all of this without barfing all over the place just because we've sequenced it a little bit. The, um, the only other change I want to make is to once again challenge the use of, uh, of, um, of uh, initial caps. I think all of this should be sentence case. And while this might be a little bit subtle, watch what happens when I change all of that copy to sentence case. Not only did I pick up a line or two on some of them, I just think that it's just a little easier to read. See from here to here. Because none of this needs to be anything more than sentence case, in my opinion. So, given the constraint that uh, that Heather proposed, I think animation comes to the rescue here. I notice a couple of little boo-boos, there's a little space right there. Um, you, you, you stare at this long enough, you'll find all sorts of little things like that. But, uh, but generally, um, given that constraint, animation is what's going to make this become palatable to the audience. All right. So, uh, what does Heather have to say, Sharon? She says, nice, great idea for census case. She really likes that, and she's excited to get rid of her awful slide. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we will wish her the best of luck. And then finally, actually not finally, um, but uh, the, the fourth one in our, in our all-girl band is Angela. Uh, and Angela wanted to make a change um, just because she was she was tired of standard PowerPoint, and uh, so you get a glimpse already of, of of the change she wanted to make. And let's walk through her deck, so you can see already that this is starkly different than just about any slide deck uh, you'll ever see, just because uh, it is set portrait instead of landscape. There's the agenda. And uh, here's a, that, I, I, that's a, I think that's a nice slide. Now, we have no idea at this point what Angela might be saying, what, what, this, what this slide is all about, and that's a good thing. Um, because you know, slides that tell you too much, then, you know, again, they, they do the job of the presenter. So I could imagine Angela saying wonderful things uh, with, this, with this photo here. I have to wonder, though, about this photo that's just sort of floating in midair. And part of that is because of the decision to go portrait instead of landscape. Same thing here. Um, but it's a nice photo, and that's a very impactful photo. I mean, wow, the, the, whatever happened here, it looks like it might be an earthquake, and that certainly needs an emergency action plan. And, um, okay, so we have some fire once again. This fire is a little bit better than the last fire. Um, it really looks like fire, and, it, and, it, and it's quite relevant to needing a fire prevention plan. Okay, now this one, these... These folks, um, well, if she, you know, if she wants to look like a supermodel and be five foot nine and only weigh 100 pounds, <laughs> then you take the uh, you take the top middle handle and you push it up very high like this. But you know, this photo just looks very distorted, and it looks like like um, Angela wanted to go edge to edge, but she just missed 
just by a little bit. And this little white streak right there, in, in my opinion, is a bit jarring, is a little bit disruptive to the eye. Same thing there. This photo also is just not high enough resolution to be shown at this size. Same thing here. Good photo, evocative, but I'm sure we can do better. In fact, I know we can do better because I did so in about 10 seconds uh, on a search. Okay, heat illness prevention plan, that's kind of a cool shot. And then um, in this presentation, Angela pays homage to Walt Disney and the approach that they took to safety. Um, so, so this is this is pulled from some of the uh, principles that um, that uh, that Disney uses. So that's kind of cool. And then some little Mickey Mouse there. Um, I don't actually know what the copyright situation is with Mickey Mouse, but um, my goodness, if Walt Disney was to go after her for uh, an in-house presentation. I'm sure they have better things to do. All right, and uh, then a little business on the website about where to go. This looks distorted also. Um, I don't know too, much, too many typefaces that are that tall. And then communication, okay. Employee hazard report, participation, these are all fine. Hazard assessment, uh, bad posture, this is all good. Um, now, um, this is fine if I'm looking at a draft. If I'm looking at a four-position only photo that, um, that Angela is intending to replace with the one that she purchased. Otherwise, she is pretty much telling her audience that she just stole a photo from Dreams Time by using one that has the watermarks behind it. All right, so here you go, the, the slides that you just saw. And I, I, Angela and I had a conversation about this also, and she said that this is part of a live presentation, a room full of new employees, okay, and, and then this is an orientation, and, I, and you can see the second paragraph, that she chose portrait because the employees were going to be subject to two hours of death by PowerPoint prior to this, and she's trying to create visual interest, trying to engage the attendees, make it the antithesis of the usual boring PowerPoint offering. Okay, so I, I completely applaud Angela for that effort. I, I want to suggest, though, that she's kind of swimming upstream here. I mean, if you look at some of these, these first few slides, um, she really was having to fight the portrait. Each one of these photos are landscape. They're not portrait. And so by putting them into a portrait box, I really don't think that she accomplished her objective of creating something that was stunning and new. Um, yes, I mean, it, it, you know, being taller than it is wide does, does look different, but, um, but I, I think she could do better than we, and I think she had great instincts here. I mean, these five slides are a nice photo and, and just, a, just a couple of words, and, um, and so I want to suggest that, that, that we return to landscape. She's fighting too much doing this portrait. I mean, projectors, they all shoot out landscape. Um, screens typically are landscape. We're used to seeing landscape. You know, doing it just because we're used to it alone, that isn't enough reason. But all when you add it all up, I think that um, that that, uh, that that we should go back to landscape. But I note that that Angela had a fully fleshed out talk track for this in her notes pages. And, um, and if she wants to create something portrait, what she should create is a killer handout that goes with these slides. And uh, now you, you probably know that this, the standard um, notes page looks like this, with a thumbnail at the top and the speaker notes at the bottom. Now, um, Microsoft has really, is really very clueless about how people do handouts. Um, they, they've given us no provision whatsoever to do, to, do, to do handouts, so I suggest to people that they use the notes page to create handouts. In about five minutes, I was able to go from here to here using the notes master. Now, many people on this call may not even know that there is such a thing as a notes master. You know about the slide master, probably. Well, the notes master where you create the global look and feel of your notes pages. So I took the notes master and I dropped the Sonoma County logo at the bottom. I put a, uh, a um, page number down here. Here's a date. Here's the title. Big old space here. Big old space for, um, for uh, the text itself. Simple formatting. And then this would govern the creation of a set of handouts. And those handouts could look like this. 
And this didn't take me more than about 20 minutes to do because because Angela had already done the work. She she had already created a lot of this discussion in the notes pages, so it was already there for me. I just needed to format it. I dropped a few photos in occasionally, and, and there we go. You see, th th this this is how you want to read this detail in in a in a here's where you want to go portrait. Here's where you don't want to go landscape. You know, people print their slides as handouts all the time. People don't like reading things that are wider than they are tall. Prefer reading things that are tall. And so, um, uh, so this is just a much, much better handout. And it travels with the slide deck because it's simply the notes pages. So all of this is here. Then we can return to the slides. And instead of the agenda that looks like that, there's a, a perfectly fine standard agenda. See here where you were, where Angela was fighting the whole portrait thing. Uh, you know, I found this fabulous photo that would work beautifully for this. Great photo. Look what you look. Look how how great it looks when you allow it to be in the space that it in the shape that it wanted to be. And integrating the text like this is a piece of cake. You know, when it's just a few words like this. So you know, bravo to Angela for honing these slides so nicely that they only had a couple of words to begin with. You know, now you're. It's really easy to find high resolution images. Keep it landscape. Okay. So this is, just becomes easy. Okay. Any questions from Angela or others about that? Rick, there's a couple of questions here. I mean, we're we're inundated with questions, so we may be answering some post event. Uh, are you duplicating efforts if you worked it out on the notes master, the master, and the master slide deck concurrently? Are you duplicating effort? That's a great question. Um, let me answer it this way. You do have to do two things instead of one. And people who have, have who have attended my webinars or seminars know that I'm that that this is one of my key premises of all that your slides alone can't do the job of covering the whole presentation experience. What you say, what you show, what you give. These need to be separate things. So you, you, you need to think about handouts separately. Now how you do that is entirely up to you. Uh, I like using the notes page for that because it travels with the slide deck and it's really easy to copy and paste from a text that has too much uh, I'm sorry, from a slide that has too much text on it into the notes page where you could then simply format it. Whether you do the, 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 the full detail first and then hone and distill to create your slides or whether you sketch it out with basic ideas on your slide and then flesh it out on the notes page, I don't care. That's entirely up to you. Uh, and if you if you want to call it duplicating the effort by copying all the text from the slide into the notes page and then formatting it, okay, fine. But one way or the other, you just can't do your audience justice with slides alone. There's no way, no way on our planet that you can create slides that are going to service both the live presentation and the handouts. Either they will be deficient as handouts or they will be death by PowerPoint in front of your audience. You must create two separate things. And I understand the specter of what I'm saying here. I know all about ridiculous deadlines, crazed bosses, 11th hour emergencies, all of that, but it doesn't change my advice here. You must think of handouts separately. And while I am doubling your work, so a little bit, I'll tell you that it'll become so much more uh, satisfying to you uh, to do it this way. You know, when you can focus on these two parts of the project separately, you're going to become better at both of them. You will find them, your work to be more rewarding and your audiences will totally appreciate that effort. Chat that if people want to learn more about quote unquote surviving handout health, that they should go uh, listen to the webinar we did last year. That's right. Um, we did one on this. Yeah. And I've actually put it in the, in the chat so people can go listen to it. Fantastic. Perfect. All right. Home stretch. Because now 
Now let's talk about the presentation expert slides. Uh, they were very good sports uh, in sending me uh, a slide deck from last month's webinar, suggesting that maybe we could put them under the spotlight just a little bit. So let's uh, let's take just a few minutes and do that. And uh, here's how this first slide comes up. And um, now this, um, uh, I, 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 I like the swoosh. I think the swoosh is kind of cool. I don't like the title banging into the swoosh, however. Um, and I also think Greg is sort of floating in the middle of space here just a little bit. And, um, and I, I, I appreciated this slide, but when I first saw it, I wasn't sure what I was looking at. Um, I'm looking at ice melting. And I think that this slide is supposed to invite people to be part of an ice breaker, um, not an ice melter. <laughs> so I thought it was good intention, but <laughs> that ice is not being broken. That ice is melting. <laughs> and uh, okay, so we have this, this, this cool little highway visual with the questions, and we have a bullet of one. And uh, you can't have a bullet of one. Bullets suggest a list of ideas. This should just be a subtitle. And, um, uh, and, and I, I wonder if really all we really need is just a picture of the, uh, of, of the chat panel. But, you know, this is kind of a cool image. Okay, we could probably do something with this, but we've got to get rid of that bullet because that bullet sort of suggests that, that somebody was lazy because that's the default in PowerPoint to have bullets in front of text even when they shouldn't have a bullet in front of them. Okay, and then uh, handouts are available. Now, um, there, there's a lot going on here, um, and I think that, um, and, 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 and I, I think, uh, Sharon, I'm speaking directly to you here because I believe that you narrate uh, when these slides come up. Um, I like this a lot. I think that this, I like this better than the swoosh, this little piece of the swoosh. I like that a lot. And, and I think here you could say, you know, you go here, you go here for this and that, but I wonder about this URL down here. Because um, it, it is a live hyperlink, and, um, and that's probably just, again, the default because PowerPoint does it automatically when it sees something that looks like a URL. But is this slide ever going to be distributed to the audience? If not, then are we expecting them to memorize this or write it down? Or I just, I think there's a disconnect with this URL and several others also in what the expectation is with the audience. And I'll elaborate a little bit because that's the first of several slides where we're telling people about all the resources that Presentation Expert has. So let's go back. So here are a bunch of resources. Here there's the Twitter feed. That's a Twitter handle that they probably could remember uh, on their own. And then here are two more places where they can go to the Google community. They can go to YouTube, the podcasts. So the, these are all resources that Presentation Expert is offering to its audience, and I think that's wonderful. Okay, so then um, Sharon introduced Dave, and that's a cool photo of Dave. Um, and he wrote a very cool book. I think it's great for his book to be here, but I don't think it's great for his book to almost be uh, jabbing the text. I think that that's too much competition right there. And I also, once again, would really like to anchor this photo. I, I, I generally like to see if we can get photos onto an edge somewhere, like up here or down here or something. And that would go for this slide as well. I mean, this is a perfectly fine slide. I'd just like to see if we might be able to anchor him so he's not floating in space. Then at the end, the thank you slide, more URLs. Now that one, I'm sorry, but there's no way anybody's ever going to remember that. They're going to have to write that down, and that's not going to be terribly friendly. This one's a little bit friendlier, but still, this is just too much. We're asking the audience to remember too much of this sort of stuff here. Good, good points, and, and uh, totally understand. This is really great stuff. You so don't stay, okay, so uh, on the final slide, same thing. We got an email address. We've got one more URL for them, a date. So there's so wh when I added it all up, there were six URLs, three places to go, two email addresses, and a date and two dates, and that's just a lot for people to remember. So let's see if we can if we can make it friendlier for them. So here are the nine slides that we saw. 
And let's go back to the title slide where, uh, again, I, the swoosh is kind of cool, but what if instead we use just this much of that swoosh and we took that same color and we continued it down there and we dropped uh, the, the, some, the, the logo right there instead. So now we've got an, a, a straight edge that we can anchor a photo against. And on that edge is what, the, what we're doing here. This is Webinar Wednesdays. There's the branding. It's on here so we don't have to float that up in that space also. Now if we bring in that content, so instead of all of that, it's this. And now, okay, so we have the orderly conversation colon business presentations redefined. We have a title and we have a subtitle. So what if instead, oh, okay, we can remove uh, the, the, the logo from up there because the logo lives down here. And now we have more space for the title, but we don't need that much space for the title because we're going to separate the title from the subtitle. And we're going to line them up right there on that edge defined by the logo. Let's put the, um, let's put Greg's, uh, uh, name there too, and now for the photo of him, let's anchor him. Instead of floating him, let's put him here. Now, this is not ideal because the photo is taller than it is wide, and he's kind of looking a little bit off the slide. Not a whole lot. It wouldn't be bad, but again, 10 seconds in a Google search, and I found a great photo of Greg Owen Boger. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but see, now that fits beautifully. He's looking into the slide. He's active. He's doing his thing, and so now I think you've got a title slide that really works. Getting rid of the swoosh I thought was key because then it gave us some nice boundaries and in those boundaries we could we could be more efficient with our space. And then it's just a question of lining things up. That's all it was. Okay, so for the icebreaker, there's some breaking of ice. And as you can see, I found this on Dreams Time and I just took the FPO image that I can use for free and put it here. And if you want it, I think it's only about 35 bucks or so uh, to get to get a version. So now we got some serious breaking of ice going on. The Q&A, let's integrate that into the motif we created, and really that's all we need. Right there, use your question tab on your dashboard. Here's what it looks like, done. Handouts now available. Okay, so this is the first of several slides that, um, as I mentioned before, um, there's this one, and there's this one, and I think there was a third one. These three together. So, and, and here's where we're asking the audience to pay, to to write down URLs or remember them or go back to the slides or something. Well, I looked. That URL right there is available. It'll cost you twelve dollars a year. Prezx.com. Now, I, I now maybe Presentation Expert isn't allowed to use that. I I refer to to you guys affectionately as PrezX all the time. I think it's a really cool nickname. And, and, um, and so I recommend you take out that URL and you tell people that all they have to remember is to go to PrezX.com because there you will find the handout. You'll find a, a button to like him on Facebook, all the YouTube videos, how you join at Google Plus, and what the, uh, the, what, what the tweet, uh, what, what the Twitter handle is. All of that is available at Prezx.com. And you'll see that come into play again in just a moment. So then there's Dave being introduced and that, and Greg, uh, because let's see, you introduced Dave, Dave introduces Greg. Okay, so that's easy. Here, here. That's a piece of cake. And then at the end, the thank you, more of this, that goes on the Prezx page also. And then the mark your calendars. So this I think we can clean up a little bit. This was last month that was that was promoting the two that are coming up. And um, so what if instead this summer at Prezx.com, Rick Altman, Makeovers, Industry Roundtable, Prezx staff, you can sign up for both of those at that URL right there. Go to Prezx.com for all the resources that that we offer with our webinar Wednesdays. Great, so, great ideas. Your audience will love you for it. Go take out that URL, it'll cost you 12 bucks. Or use okay. presentationexpert.com. But I find that at the conference, it's, it's handy to have a simpler URL. You know, we're presentationsummit.com. I also always take out pre-sum 
and then the date. So presum15.com, the patrons can go there and then they can you know, see the app, download all that stuff and everything else. So let me just end with a very quick commercial about that because if you enjoyed this topic today, you would absolutely love attending our annual conference in September where across four days we are going to cover the whole of the presentation experience from software, technique, um, uh, message crafting, slide design, presentation design, including makeovers like this one, all the way through to delivery. We have three tracks of seminars. We have a help center that is a total hands-on experience from morning until night. The expo features all this cool new technology. We create an atmosphere that is unique for a business conference. That photo in the center was not staged. You will not be able to help but make lasting and meaningful relationships at this conference conference, we have watched business partnerships forged, permanent friendships formed, we have had three couples meet at our conference and then marry. So we, we are indeed a full service event. All the information you'd need is on the screen right now. We would love to hear from you. We are going to be in the French Quarter of New Orleans at this fabulous hotel that is at the foot of Bourbon Street. You can't do better. Uh, can't think of a better way to spend the last four days of September than with us in New Orleans and with the presentation expert folks who are going to be there for sure. We had lots of plus. You're awesome. Um, Diane Dorsey actually has been tweeting about you, so that's great. And one of my favorites is, Sue Cordell said, I cannot wait for this recording to come out. I plan to hammer it down the throats of my fellow developers. And <laughs> Music I, to my ears. <laughs> and I think a big thank you to the, you know, almost 300 people who are still on. And I want to say have a great rest of your day and end it here. Thank you so much, Rick. Pleasure was all mine. Thanks, everybody.